Hello, this is Mr. Marek, and in this video we're going to learn about wave interference. Wave interference is different than pass interference, so don't think you know wave interference just because you know football. Wave interference occurs as the phenomenon that occurs when, wave, when two waves are in the same place at the same time. A fancy word that you can use to describe two waves in the same place at the same time is superimposed. If you ever put two images on top of each other, then they have been superimposed. So when two waves are superimposed, we can use the fancy term superposition principle to describe this idea. When two waves are superimposed, the displacement of the medium at that point is the sum of the amplitude of the two original waves. Now, we're going to only stick with two ways, but this could be as many ways as you can imagine in one place at the same time. So this big idea is called the superposition principle. Um, and that's kind of too long. Basically, the idea here is that the amplitudes of the waves add when they interfere with each other. So that's the basic idea. Let's see if we can kind of dig in a little bit deeper and understand what that means. So what we're going to do is we're going to track two waves over time. The dashed line represents equilibrium, and here are two waves which are traveling in opposite directions. I'm going to draw boxy waves like this just to make it easier to draw. At one second, the two waves would be here and here, um, and nothing particularly interesting is happening right now. Um, because the waves aren't superimposed yet, they don't interact with each other at all. It's not until we get to two seconds when the waves actually meet and are in the same place at the same time that wave interference actually occurs. And so the way that I've drawn this with an amplitude of about 2a for the first one and about 3a for the second one, the waves interfere to produce a wave whose amplitude is about 5a. So at that point, the waves are in the same place at the same time, and so they interfere with each other. This kind of interference is referred to as constructive interference, meaning that we get a larger displacement than either of the two original waves would have given us. And so the medium at that point moves much farther, a distance of 5a, than it did at any other point along the string. Now the tricky thing here is, what happens afterwards? What happens at three seconds? Notice I didn't draw an arrow for that pulse that occurs at two seconds. That's not a single wave, it's the result of two waves that combine at that spot. And so, again, the waves only affect each other when they're superimposed. So afterwards, like at three seconds, the waves keep on moving as if nothing ever happened. So they don't affect each other anymore after they interfere with each other. So the idea here, wave interference only occurs when the two waves are superimposed. So it's only at two seconds that the waves are superimposed, so that's the only place where we see the interference. It's very important we understand that otherwise the waves don't interact with each other and the interference does nothing to affect the waves themselves. It only occurs at that time and at that location. So what happens if the two waves are out of phase? Out of phase means that instead of them both being up, one is up and one is down. And so maybe the two waves now look like this. And so they'll travel towards each other, and I'm going to have them interfere at two seconds again so that our picture matches up with the other picture. This time, instead of an amplitude of 2a and 3a, I could say that the amplitude is 2a and negative 3a. The displacement due to the wave on the right is downward, so you can call it negative. That's going to result in a wave that looks like this, which has an amplitude of negative a. This kind of interference is referred to as destructive interference which means you get a smaller displacement when the two waves interfere as opposed to a larger displacement. And a displacement of A is smaller than both 2A and 3A. 
The same idea about what happens afterwards still applies. The fact the wave is interfered at 2 seconds does nothing to affect what's happening to them at 3 seconds. Now, be careful. Nothing is actually being destroyed. The two waves still exist, just like they did before. The wave with the negative 3 amplitude is still going to the right. The wave with the 2A amplitude is, is still going to the right. Excuse me. The 3A wave is going to the left. The 2A wave is going to the right. Nothing has changed about those two waves. So the term destructive interference is kind of deceptive. It implies that something's being destroyed, but nothing is actually being destroyed. That's just the name that we give the interference when we get a smaller amplitude as opposed to a larger amplitude. So the next thing we're interested in is what happens to a point on the string as these two waves go through them. So I'm going to kind of bring back the previous example. I'm just going to redraw it real quick. And what we want to do is graph the displacement of two points, point A and point B, over time. So I put two points on the string, point A um, to the left of the center and point B right at the center. And so I'm going to kind of set up a graph, position versus time, for point A. We kind of go backwards real quick. Point A at time t equals zero, the displacement at point A is zero. It's not moving. At one second, a single wave goes through it. Messed up my graph here. Back this up. There. So at zero seconds, the displacement of point A is zero. And at one second, that single wave goes through it. At two seconds, the point A is back to equilibrium. And then at three seconds, that's when the other wave goes through it. And then at four seconds, that wave has passed. And so if we kind of sketch out what happens um, over time, the point A part of the string, point of the string, goes from zero amplitude up to 2A at one second, back to zero, up to 3A at three seconds, and then back to zero. Point B, on the other hand, also starts out with zero amplitude, zero displacement. At one second, there still hasn't been a wave to travel through point B, so it's still at zero. At two seconds, that's where both waves get to point B. So that point goes up to a uh, displacement of 5A at two seconds. And then the two waves pass, and that point returns to equilibrium. And so a graph of position versus time will look something like that for point B. So at A, two small waves pass through the string. At B, one large wave passes through the string, or whatever the medium might be. Okay, so drawing these pictures and these graphs is, is nice and all, but it's really difficult to see what's going on in a static situation when these waves are actually moving over time. So what you might want to do, this would really help your understanding, is go to a simulator. And we've used the FET simulators before. And the easiest way for me to tell you how to get there is just to Google the phrase FET, P-H-E-T, and then ways on a string. If you're on an iPad or iPhone or tablet of some kind, um, you're going to want to find the HTML5 version of that app. And when you run the app, it kind of looks like this. What you want to do is you want to leave the properties of one end of the string fixed. You can change around between manual control, oscillatory control, and a pulse control. You want to set the dampening to none. The pause and slow motion buttons may be real helpful to you. 
And then you can control the source. You can control the amplitude, you press the little arrow, um, or the little button right here to create a wave pulse. If you set it to oscillate, then it's just going to continuously go up and down, but you can change the frequency. So all the properties of the wave you can adjust, and then the idea is that you observe what happens on the string. And as waves are reflected from the fixed end, you will see what happens to the waves as they meet. One thing that you might also do is set a reference line. That will basically give you a laser you can move around so that you can sort of track the height of the waves, the amplitudes of your waves. So playing around with that a little bit, um, you know, even though you're not necessarily measuring anything, um, but it might help you understand this wave interference in a little bit more detail. So do try to do that at some point before the next class period because we're going to try to use the same simulation to understand what happens when we have continuous waves interfering with each other um, and we get a thing called a standing wave. So that's the next step in our interference um, journey. If anything in this video didn't make sense to you uh, or if you need some help understanding something, um, please ask during class. Otherwise, that's the end. Have a great day.